today on Rappler. Uh, ano po kaya alam mo doon sa bidding process? Na yun, di ka man member ng BAC. Observer ka lang eh. Opo. Senator Santiago questions the role of resigned Interior Undersecretary Puno in the bidding for policemen's rifles. My accusers had no evidence whatsoever to substantiate their accusation. Former Interior Undersecretary Puno denies he is the protector of the illegal numbers game, Pueting. And U.S. Secretary of State Clinton says they cannot ban an anti-Islam film because of the freedoms enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. Hi, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senator Miriam Santiago questions the role of a resigned DILG Undersecretary Rico Puno in the bidding process for policemen's rifles. Late Secretary Jesse Obredo had stopped the bidding, citing Puno's conflict of interest. So, let me just say that while I appreciate his presence here, because in effect, we are offering him a chance to clear his name, his answers were at best fudged. Senator Miriam Santiago reaches this conclusion after the Senate hearing to investigate resigned interior and local government undersecretary Rico Puno. The Santiago-led committee calls for a hearing to probe whether the DILG needs a change in structure and to see if Puno is guilty of allegations regarding wetting and anomalous arms procurements for the Philippine National Police. Puno denies receiving any money from the notorious illegal gambling game but admits that as an observer, he called a meeting with gun suppliers bidding for the PNP arms procurements. The best, uh, ano pa alam mo doon sa bidding process? Ngayon, hindi ka man member ng BAC. Observer ka lang eh. Opo, observer lang po ako. O, oh, anong ka ba legal basis mong nakikialam ka? Kung alam po, as undersecretary at saka yung special functions namin at uh, para yun, inri-report namin kay secretary. He admits being in Israel on May 10, the same day of the second pre-conference for the procurement of 1,500 assault rifles for the police. Documents show PNP Special Action Force Leocadio Santiago and gun supplier Reynaldo Espinelli were on the same trip, as well as Puno and his consultant Ramiro Lopez III. Puno denies going with Santiago to an ocular of the Israel Military Industries, a partner of Espinelli. He says he and Lopez only saw Santiago at the firing range while in Israel to go shooting. Then why did you go there? I was there on vacation to, uh, to, the, to Jerusalem. In June, after the trip, Espinelli won the procurement bid on the pistols. Bidding for the rifles was stopped by the late Secretary Jesse Robredo, citing Puno's role and conflict of interest in the bidding as one of the reasons. Puno also admits Lopez joined meetings of the PNP Bidding and Awards Committee. Santiago slams both for their active involvement in the bidding process since neither are members of the PNP BAC. Sarmiento says they let Lopez attend meetings but did not let him or Puno influence BAC's final decisions. Apo, pero medyo mabait po kami ron kasi ang amin pong idea is baka meron po sila. What you call mabait, I call irregular. Uh, as Undersecretary, Puno was in charge of the police and the Bureau of Fire Protection, a first. Traditionally, the DILG secretary heads all sectors under the department. Santiago says she does not plan to hold another hearing and will study what changes to the structure of the DILG she will recommend. Former Interior Undersecretary Puno says there is no evidence to prove his alleged role as protector of the illegal number scheme, Hueteng. My accusers had no evidence whatsoever to substantiate their accusation. This only shows that my accusers either knowingly lied through their teeth or irresponsibly maligned my person on the strength, or if I may say, the weakness of their hearsay sources. Retired Archbishop Oscar Cruz attends the probe initiated by Senator Santiago. Cruz and Santiago say it is impossible for wetting operations to continue without protection from government officials. In 2010, Cruz named Puno and former PNP chief Jesus Versoza as sweating protectors. But he says he does not have evidence because transactions come in cash and no receipts are given. President Benigno Aquino prevents his cabinet secretaries from attending the probe on resigned interior under Secretary Puno. Senator Santiago earlier accused the palace of trying to sabotage her planned investigation of Puno. 
The secretaries invited to the hearing are Executive Secretary Paquito Ochoa Jr., Justice Secretary Laila de Lima, Environment Secretary Ramon Paje, and incoming Interior Secretary Mar Rojas. In a letter, the Office of the President says the committee investigation seems to have no basis in the absence of a resolution. But Santiago says the Senate does not need a resolution to begin a probe. Rappler's editor-at-large Martes Vitug talks about how President Aquino can use his high satisfaction rating to push for the passage of the syntax bill. Let's watch her video blog. President Aquino is riding high. Most Filipinos approve of him as the latest SWS poll shows. The survey conducted last week of August gave the president an astounding 67% satisfaction rating, his highest so far in his two years in office. It's the same rating Estrada got at the peak of his popularity. But as the wise senior senator Juan Ponce and Rila has said, popularity is like ice cream. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes soft and melting. So why not put this tremendous political capital to good use before it melts away? The syntax bill is at a crucial juncture. The Senate will vote on it soon. From the 60 billion pesos envisioned as revenues, the figure is now down to 30 billion pesos after Congress passed a much diluted version. Most of this will fund the health care needs of many Filipinos. But in the Senate, the bill may be even more watered down. It is tough fighting big business and vested interests. This is one moment, however, that the president can harness his rock star ratings for the common good. The Visayan Forum Foundation says it will vindicate itself in court after the U.S. Agency for International Development filed fraud charges against it. In a statement, the Philippines' top anti-trafficking group says, Our conscience is clear. We have nothing to hide. USAID accused the Visayan Forum of submitting forged documents to defraud the donor agency over a 1.65 million U.S. dollar or 69.16 million peso project. In an August 31 search warrant, the presiding judge says Visayan Forum Executive Director Maria Cecilia Obanda may possess the falsified private documents. As anti-American protests erupt in the Muslim world over a privately produced film mocking Islam, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says the United States is powerless to act against those who incite hatred due to the freedoms enshrined in its constitution. Clinton hopes people understand the U.S. government cannot ban the video. She says our country does have a long tradition of free expression. Clinton adds, we do not stop individual citizens from expressing their views, no matter how distasteful they may be. The First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution protects the freedom of speech for everyone. In Yemen, four more people die as anti-American protests continue across the Middle East and North Africa. The deaths were reported in the Yemeni capital, Sana, as police fire live rounds and tear gas to disperse hundreds of protesters trying to storm the U.S. Embassy. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, the Philippine National Police investigates if a PNP-issued firearm was used by a terrorism suspect shot down by security forces in Indonesia. According to the Jakarta Post, a 9mm Beretta pistol with property Philippine National Police etched on its side was recovered by Indonesian police after the August 31 anti-terrorism operation in Surakarta's central Java province. It ended with two 19-year-old suspected militants and one officer dead after a shootout. A spokesman says the Philippine police have yet to verify the authenticity of the sketchy report. At number 6, six Chinese government ships sail into waters around disputed islands claimed by both Beijing and Tokyo Friday. The Japanese Coast Guard issues warnings telling them to leave. The arrival came days after the Japanese government completed its planned nationalization of the islands, which it calls Senkaku, but which China claims as Daoyu. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda vows to maintain utmost vigilance. And at number 7, a team of celebrities joined the quest for peace in the Philippines as part of a new campaign to rally more support for the negotiations between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. I Am For Peace is the slogan for the campaign joined by personalities such as Black Eyed Peace member Apple the App, actress Ann Curtis, composer Noel Cabangon, and internet icon Ramon Bautista. The government and the MILF hope to sign a peace deal this year to end four decades of conflict in central Mindanao. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. 
more than 300 students, teachers, and members of civil society groups converge in Ateneo de Zamboanga for Rappler's Social Media for Social Change chat series. The event carries the theme Mobilizing the Youth for Political Engagement. As the Philippines prepares for the 2013 elections, students discuss how they can influence local political exercises through vigilance and use of social media. Western Mindanao State University professor Mamor Edding says the 2013 elections is a youth decision. An asteroid the size of a skyscraper flies by the Earth at 7 in the morning Philippine time and is broadcast live during a slew space camera show. The asteroid, known as 2012 QG42, was discovered on August 26 and is estimated to be roughly the size of the Eiffel Tower. It is classified as potentially hazardous, which means its orbit could cross that of the Earth's in the future. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, September 14, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Natasha Gutierrez, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.